Well, hello everyone. Um, in this video, I am going to be talking about vectors using the standard template library. Uh, I'm not going to talk about how do we create the implement. Oh, I'm not going to talk about the implementation of vectors and what's inside those methods. I'm just going to go through the standard template libraries and how do we use it and how, what are the methods that are associated with vectors and a lot of a lot of details associated with vectors. Um, so hopefully this will help understanding that concept. Now, before I say anything, you just need to know why do we have vectors. Now, vectors came to solve a problem that we have with arrays. And the problem that I'm talking about here is the size of the array. Now, when you create an array, whether it's a static or dynamic, you need to tell me what is the size of that array. And once the size is specified, there is no way you can change that using arrays. So vectors basically came to solve that problem and the solution that Victor is uh, proposing here is whenever you get to a point where the array will be populated and is going to be filled with data <coughs> and information, you will basically going to have to extend the size of the data. And usually we double that size. And then you keep adding data as much as you want. And of course, if you get to the point where the data, uh, the, the, the file is going to be uh, filled again, then after that, you're going to have to go back and extend that size uh, again and again. So this is how Victor's actually proposed the solution for the problem of array uh, size. <clears throat> um, so to be able to create a Victor, you basically need to have um, a header file called Victor. And to be able to implement some operations, you need to have a header file called Iterator. And Iterator basically will give you access to the elements inside of the array using the addresses of the elements. Um, we can easily uh, define the beginning, the address of the first element inside the vector and the address of, it's not the exact last element, the element after that, the address of that, and using those addresses we can navigate through the data. So first thing first, this is how you create a vector here. Uh, you just type Victor since vectors are templates, so you will need to um, specify the data, the type of that vector. In this case, going to be a vector of integers, and then finally you give it a name. In this case, I created a vector. I didn't specify a size here, so it's going to be zero at the beginning. And then here I create another vector. I call it Vic2, and in Vic2 I specified the size to be 10. So that basically means I reserved. Uh, this is what we call initial capacity to be 10. Of course, once that capacity is populated with values, and if you want to add more data, the, size, the, the capacity is going to be doubled after that. So <clears throat> this is again a for loop. And in this for loop, I am going to populate the victor2 with 10 values. And basically, I'm uh, extending the value of i by 1, and then multiply it by 10. So I'm going to get 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way to 100 to be populating this vector. And look at it, I'm treating it as an array. Now the problem is I cannot apply the same concept that I have here with a vector that doesn't have a size, doesn't have a capacity. So you cannot use the same concept here with vector one because I didn't specify the size of vector one. Now let's start talking about the first methods we have here with vectors. The first method of vectors we have pushback. Pushback will add an element to the end of this vector. So after the hundred, I'm gonna add uh, negative 10, negative 20, and negative 30. And then after that, this is a way that I can figure out how many elements do I have in this vector. And it's going to be assigned to the variable called size. And then after that, I wanted to show those values on the screen. So I went and created this <coughs> for loop. And as you can see here, I'm just treating this array just like a vector, uh, sorry, this vector just like an array. Um, I'm going to comment this section here so I can run it without showing everything. And as I go, I will uh, show you the rest of the project. So let me just run it. And here we go. So 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way to 100. And then I pushed back the negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. And that's what I got so far. Okay. Now let's keep going and talking about more methods are associated with vectors. And in this case, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about how do I insert elements inside a vector. Well, first of all, you should know about insertion is when you want to insert a vector uh, using the insert method, you have two arguments here. The first one represent a pointer 
an, a memory uh, address and the value of that memory address. And let me just tell you what is this. This v2.begin is basically going to return the address of the first element inside that array. And I'm increasing it by 3. So basically, it's going to go starting counting from the first element, counting three values. And after that number 3 uh, value, a, a negative 20 is going to be added. So this basically is going to be updated. I'm going to add 100, negative 100 here. And then negative 20 is going to be added again. Remember, the first one, which is negative 100, 10, 20, so I will get those three values, and then the negative 20 is going to be added between the 20 and the 30. <clears throat> right after that, I have another method called erase. How do you uh, delete an element? We just do the same thing. You just tell me which element you want to delete. Again, you have to tell me that by telling me the address of the first element and plus 8. So basically, let me just run it so you'll see the results, and I'll show you which element is going to be deleted after I run it. Now, after that, <clears throat> I decided that I want to update a value in this vector. And to update a value and change it, all you have to do is to know the location or the index of that value inside that vector, and you change it the way you want it. Um, <clears throat> what should, one thing you should know about those two methods, the erase and the insert, every time you insert an element, you would need to make a space for the value you want to insert, so it's going to be pushed to the right. And every time you want to erase an element, the element that you're going to erase, all the elements to the right of it is going to be pushed one step to the left. So <clears throat> every time you erase or you insert, the number of items, which is basically going to be defined by the size, will go up and down depending on what are you doing. Here's another way you can update a value inside a vector by using a function called at. So I'm saying the value at, in the, uh, at 6, that basically the 6th element, and you remember we start counting from 0, so we're talking about, not it's index 6, but it's the 7th element. I'm going to change it to equal <coughs> whatever the value you have at 5 plus 1, which basically I know it's 999, nine, 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 so it's going to be 1,000. Right after that, I decided to check out what is the size again because I did a lot of change here. And I decided to go through all the elements again. Let's run it and let's see the differences between the two times. And as you can see here, <clears throat> of course, this is me checking if it's empty or what is it? Um, yep. This one here, I'm checking V1 if it's empty. So let's just ignore that for now. So this, remember, was my original vector. Now, remember, I added 100 using insert, and I inserted uh, 200, and I, then I update it. Look at this. This is 30, and this is supposed to be 40. But I changed the 40 to be 900, and I changed this to be uh, 1,000. So 40 and 50 are updated. Now look at 60 is OK, and I erased 70, as you can see here. That was erased. <clears throat> so those are the methods that are associated with vectors. Now, um, I'm going to go and move on into another topic or uh, a different story. And this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign vector 2 to vector 1. Now, one thing you should know about C++, before I jump into the details, if you have an array and you assign one array to the other, what, what you're doing here is... Uh, what you're doing here is basically you're taking the first array and you're taking the address of that array and you assign it to, sorry, the second array here, you assign it to the first array, okay? Now, when you do something like that, in the memory, what's going on, you're having two arrays referencing the same spot inside the memory. So if you change two, one's going to be affected. If you change one, two is going to be affected. And again, this is in arrays. <clears throat> and this is what we call a shallow copy. Shallow copy basically means you're having two arrays referencing the same spot inside the memory. And this is what happens with the array. With vectors, they decided that this is not what we want. When you assign one vector to the other, basically a, a deep copy is going to happen. And, and that basically means you will have two copies of that vector. One of them is going to be called vector 1 and the other one is going to be called vector 2. So if you update vector 1, vector 2 would not have any effect whatsoever. If you change Victor 2, the same thing will be for V1. It will not have any effect on it. So this is just me trying to demonstrate that. I did. I decided to assign Victor 2 to Victor, uh, Victor 1. And <clears throat> in this area here, you can see I'm doing something a little bit different comparing to what I did at the, at the top. I decided to use uh, the iterator to navigate through the elements 
So we got Vic1 and we got Vic2. So here at this point, I decide to create an iterator. I call it begin. Now remember, look at the syntax here. You're going to have to start by telling me what is the container that you have here? What is the data structure, which is a victor, which is a template? And then it's a type integer. <clears throat> and I'm declaring an iterator object. I'm calling it begin. And I'm assigning the beginning of victor1 to it. I'm doing the same thing for the end. And this is my for loop. I am saying here, as long as the beginning not equals the end, increase the beginning by one. So this is how I move from one point to the other. So since this uh, the iterator is an address by nature, so <clears throat> by tapping the asterisk here, I'm actually trying to have access to that value. Once that uh, value is printed, the address is going to be updated by one. So it's going to be moving to the next one to show you the next value. And that will show you. And you will see after this, I will get the exact same victor as one, uh, <clears throat> as victor two. And here it is. This is victor one, and this is victor two. <clears throat> now, the final part that I want to talk about is to show you that if I change Victor 2, Victor 1 would not be affected by that. And here it is, push back 1,000. So I add a value of 1,000 to Victor 2. And here I'm trying to see what is Victor 1 is going to look like and what is Victor 2 is going to look like. You see here I did a little bit change here. I decided to include the initialization in the counter here. And look at the counter. I have this auto data type. The auto data type is a really cool feature in C++. It's basically going to look at this assignment operation. It's going to say, what is the data type of this part? And this is iterator, so this is going to be defined as an iterator of a type vector for a data type of index. So instead of me typing all of this here, I'm just typing auto. Auto is going to be defined by whatever you have here. Same thing here of core rules vector 2. Now you will notice after I push the 1,000, V1 would not be affected as much as V2. V2 will see that 1,000, and V1 will not see that 1,000. And here it is. So this is V1, and this is V2. And you can see that I got the 1,000 right there. So this is basically how the standard template library looks like for vectors. Now, you, as a programmer or student in data structure class, you should be able to think about, well, what if I want to create my own version of vectors? Well, that's pretty easy. Just remember, vector by itself, it's a data structure, and it's a template, and it's a dynamic array. So um, I, it's, it's basically that simple. Right now, you need to know how does it work from deep down inside. But if you choose just to learn how to use vectors, this should be enough. Thank you for watching, and I am done with this short video to explain the victors from the perspective of uh, standard template libraries.